require from the room here? Yeah, I mean, we'll open. Okay, we'll still go. Room. I'll wait till they come in. And no, no, no. Yeah, they're the same way. Oh, you're going to send them? Yes, sir. We're doing a scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me get it, because today's a busy day. Yes. <laughs> okay, good morning. Again, again to most of you, good morning. So a, a couple of announcements before we uh, get started. Uh, we will resume our uh, spring focus uh, this coming Wednesday. So uh, we, we took a break this past Wednesday for the Easter festivities, but we'll resume uh, this coming Wednesday. So uh, a couple of uh, things. The uh, women will meet next Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. And I don't see Sandra here. Does anybody uh, from the women's standpoint need to say anything about that before we move on? Doesn't look like it. Okay. And then uh, on the Saturday, the April 13th at 3 p.m., we will have a baby shower for uh, Jordan and David Rhodes. So uh, please be uh, cognizant of that event and attend as you can. Um, the lilies that you see throughout the church, if you purchased lilies, today is your opportunity to take these home with you. So please just uh, grab the lilies and take them home. If you didn't see the sheep, so we've got, we had a little Jesus, we have the cross, we have the sheep, a couple other things, but so today is sheep. If you didn't get one, they're available on either side as you depart today. And then if you have uh, flowers uh, that you would like to put on the cross from our uh, sunrise service this morning, uh, by all means, please, uh, you are welcome to do so at any time. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes, Bob. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Any other announcements? If not, then please let us uh, stand and prepare our hearts for worship as the Acolyte brings in the light of Christ.
the choir, they always look good, but today they look exceptionally good. <laughs> Our call to worship this morning is a continuation from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Welcome to the house of the Lord on this Easter Sunday. We meet to celebrate the resurrection of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of quick announcements. Today is also our Easter cantata, and you see that we printed out the sheet of all the songs we are going to sing. Now, let me say from the get-go that the cantata is not a spectator sport where you sit and observe and you clap. And, oh, that's good. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an act of worship. We are all here to worship together. And that's why we, we're giving you the word so you can see what we are singing, you can participate in it. Let your heart rise up to worship the Lord and sing with us. And don't worry about the voices. If you join in the worship, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Amen. All our announcements have already been made, and there are some also in the bulletin, so you see everything. If you are joining us online, the bulletin, the words of the songs, everything is on, on our website, unionmcnc.com. Let's rise and sing our hymn of praise, please. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus of Nazarene. I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Oh, how marvelous, how wonderful, then my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how Garden, 
seated and as we pray together. How marvelous indeed, how wonderful, Lord, is your love for us. You sent Jesus to die for us. All our sins were laid on him. He willingly gave himself for us, an innocent man in exchange for us, the guilty. <laughs> Lord, you did this so that we might be redeemed, redeemed from sin, from death, from the curses that come with sin, from the righteous judgments that you pass when people do the wrong things. Christ came and died for us. He gave his life for us. He humbled himself. He emptied himself. He did all this so that we might be saved. And today we come to celebrate the fact that he is risen. He didn't just die. His life was sown as a seed for the salvation of everyone here and around the world. And Lord, we come before you this morning in praise and thanksgiving for what you have done for us in Christ. Lord, how marvelous, how wonderful is your love for us. With all your goodness to us, Lord, you still invite us to come to you with all our petitions, anything that concerns us. You ask us not to worry about anything, but in everything with prayer, with thanksgiving, to bring our petitions to you. And you promise us peace and answers to prayers. So, Lord, we come before your throne of grace, mindful that Jesus shed his blood to give us access to you, mindful that Jesus' body was pierced, broken, abused, so that we might have a way to you. And also mindful that Jesus sits at the right hand of God as our great high priest, our eternal high priest, who makes intercession for us day in, day out. With all this in mind, we come to your throne of grace and we say together, Lord, in your mercy, Father, we lift up our nation into your hands. We lift up places around the world where there's conflict and fighting and some of the places we see on the news and it's heartbreaking. But Christ is our P Prince of Peace who gave his life so that we might find peace. On this resurrection day, Lord, we pray for the leaders of this nation and around the world who are mediating all these complex situations. We ask, Lord, for your wisdom for them, for your grace for them, that whatever they have to do, you will guide their steps so that broken lives can be mended, so that those who are hurting can receive a healing balm. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Lord. Father, we want to pray for the church around the globe as we celebrate Resurrection Day. Help us to know that it's not just for our salvation, but for the salvation of the whole world. Help us, to help us to step up to the call you've called us to, to let our light shine and let the light that comes from us, through us, bring light to everybody, to all co dark corners of the world, of our world, <laughs> of our communities. Father, help us to be mindful that you've called us to be the salt of the earth that the power of the resurrection of Christ in us can reach people who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, yes, Lord. we pray for our own community here, all the churches in our community, as we celebrate Resurrection Day. Lord, we pray that you pour out your spirit upon us. Help us to be true witnesses for Christ, to let the light of Christ shine through us. We pray for our own church, we ask, Lord, that you unite our hearts. This is a big desire of Jesus for us, that we will be united. Help us to walk in love with each other, to be an example to each other, an example of Christ's love to each other and to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray for all on our prayer list. We ask, Father, for those who are unwell, we ask for your touch for them, your healing touch. Isaiah 53 tells us that Jesus' body, when it was wounded, was for our healing too. 1 Peter 2.24 says the same thing. And so, Lord, look on our beloved Christ, whose body was broken for us, and touch all of our members who are unwell, who cannot be with us today. Members of our community, for those who are suffering through depression, sadness, whatever 
discomfort they are going through, Lord, you poured out your spirit of comfort, the Holy Spirit, into our lives. Touch them, Lord. Raise them up. For those who are going through difficult times, times of trouble, Lord, you are the rock on which we can lean, and we do lean on you this morning. Touch them, raise them up, help them, Lord, through their challenges and difficulties. Father, we come with all these requests before you. We know that the blood of Jesus was shed for us. We are covered by this blood that was shed for us. And as you said in Exodus, when you see the blood, you pass over. Father, we are your children. Christ died for us. We come before your throne this morning. We come on the basis of the body of um, blood of Christ that was broken and shed for us. And we come with confidence and with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, we pray. It's the same Jesus who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time to bring our gifts and offerings to the Lord.
Let's see quick. Thank you. 
today we will be reading from 1 Lesson John 20, 20 through 10. Pew Bible, page 768. <coughs> Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started, started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked <laughs> in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, but stripped from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had risen from the dead. Then the disciple went back to where they were staying. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
morning. Our second lesson for today is John chapter 20, verse 11 through 18. Q Bible, page 769. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing <coughs> there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but stay to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said those, these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to
is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise God. Our third lesson comes from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Uh, it's found in your pew Bible on page 831. And Pastor, thank you for inviting me to do this and having me follow those children. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so St. Paul writes, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look out not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, <coughs> being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
question. What does resurrection mean for you? I want to make two, two, two quick points today. Uh, we're going to have communion, so it will soon be a long sermon. Sounds small, but we really. <laughs> First point is Jesus humbled himself and he's now exalted. Thanks for reading that to us, Mitch, this morning. St. Paul's talking about this says we should have the mind of Christ. What does that mean? Philippians 2, verse 4. Let each one, each of you, look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. There's a certain mystery in God. We don't fully understand it. But we see glimpses of it in the scriptures. It talks about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the same as God as much as the Father in heaven as well. But the Bible says that though he's, he was his equal to God, he didn't say that he wasn't going to come and redeem us. Long ago, some conversation happened in heaven. I don't know what it was. I don't have the full meaning. But the great thing is, I don't have to know everything. <laughs> you like to know everything, <laughs> every little thing. That becomes a burden, <laughs> right? We don't have to know everything, but as we know enough to believe in God, to receive salvation for our souls, to receive the blessings of God in our lives. What the Bible tells us clearly is that there was this conference in heaven between God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Jesus was elected to come and save us. And Paul says here that Jesus did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. He didn't say, why doesn't this other person go? Right, this is the mind of Christ. The Bible says that he emptied himself. He emptied himself. What does it mean that he emptied himself? He let go of all the glory. He let go of all the power. So he could become a human being. So he was born as a human. You know, the Spirit of God came up upon Mary. We know that story from Christmas. And Mary had a baby. And that baby was Jesus. And Jesus was called the Anointed One. The Spirit of God came upon him. He was a human being like you and me. He took on our flesh. He became very much like us. He ate. He slept. He did all the things that humans do. But he emptied himself. He set aside the glory, the power. And he came and he took on the form of a slave. He became a human person. He didn't just empty himself. He also humbled himself. And once he became a human being, the Bible says here that he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So here he is. He's come as a person. He's coming for this particular thing called salvation of everyone, redemption. And part of the plan is he's supposed to give his life. And he humbled himself. It wasn't easy. If you've been following the Easter story, he went into the Garden of Gethsemane just before he was crucified. And he prayed. He fell on the ground. The Bible says he was grieved. He said, my soul is grieved. Should I just let this go? Do I have to go through with this? But Father, not my will. What your will is, I will do what you want. <laughs> right? That's humility. That's humility. This is the mind of Christ. He emptied himself. He humbled himself. And the Bible says, God has now exalted him highly and given him a name that's above every name. He humbled himself. He emptied himself. This is very practical for all of us. There are many situations where we find that we are, we are with people of equal intelligence. They know enough. <laughs> you know, they are as smart as we are. Why should I, why should I take the second place? Someone, I mean, you are passed over for a promotion. And you are so mad you can't see straight. That's one of those American expressions I like. <laughs> so mad you can't see straight. The Bible says here that we should think about others as better than ourselves. Not necessarily because they are actually better or smarter or anything, but it's just taking a position of humility. That's what Jesus did. That's a path he set for us. And because he humbled himself, the Bible says he's now been exalted. God has exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. In heaven, on earth, under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. In other scriptures, it says that there's no other name in the whole of the universe, you know, that is greater than the name of Jesus. No other name. What can you name this morning? Poverty? Not enough money to pay your bills? Sadness? Misery? Whatever name there is, the name of Jesus can overcome it. The implication of this is we can go to God in prayer confidently in the name of Jesus and expect results. The Lord God hears the name of Jesus and hears our prayers and responds to it. Because Jesus came, he humbled himself, he did all that for us, for our salvation, for you and I, for us to be redeemed. And there's nothing that can overtake that name of Jesus. If you're a Christian, or if you don't even know the Lord, and you don't understand the power of the name of Jesus, you suffer needlessly. You go through things you don't need to go through. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So the second point I ought to make, I said it's a short sermon. Number one is Jesus humbled himself, he emptied himself, and God has exalted him, giving him a name that's above every name. No matter what you're going through in life, you can go to the Lord God our Father in the name of Jesus, and you'd have, you'd have answers to your prayer. The name of Jesus is like having a blank check. You know, let's say that you, you know somebody who's a billionaire, and he gives you a check and says, go to the bank, whatever you need. Do you need a truck? Yeah. I don't know how much it costs, but here's a check. I've signed it. Go to the bank or go to the dealer. Whenever they tell, whatever amount they tell you, just write the amount there. The check will clear, right? And you're like, yeah, that's a billionaire. He's got, he's got cash. He can, he, can, he can cover this. It's the same with the name of Jesus. Whatever problems we have, we can go to the Father in the name of Jesus, and the Lord will touch us and would heal us. He, he gave Jesus for us for our salvation, and he would do much more than that for us. So the second point is Jesus was raised from the dead before he was exalted. Resurrection, that's what we celebrate on Easter Sunday, that Jesus has actually been risen from the dead. Christ is risen. What's the response? He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And St. Paul says that, this is one of my favorite portions of scripture, this verse in scripture right here. He says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. Are you a Christian? Who is a Christian here? Who has received the Lord Jesus? Who believes in Christ? Who has committed their life to Christ? Then the spirit of God is in you. And Paul says that if that spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, that same spirit who is in you will give life to your mortal body, this body. The life he's talking about is energy. He's talking about light. He's talking about whatever we need in, in this body. Do you need some energy to get up out of bed sometimes in the morning? Well, the Spirit of God is in you. He'll give you energy. Who has experienced it? It happens to me all the time. I mean, you, you've got to trust the Lord for it. Say, Lord, you raised Jesus from the dead. And Paul says, if the same Spirit who raised Christ from the dead is in you, the Spirit of God is in me. It's the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is in me, he will give life to this body. Life in this life that we are living, and in, 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 in eternity, we will have life. If we die before Christ comes back, the Bible says we will be resurrected again, life again. Christ will give life to us. The same Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead. Think about it. Dead body, completely lifeless. And they come to the grave, and the body is no longer there. What's happened? And then before you know it, Mary is standing there. Jesus just appears right next to her, calls her name. Whoa, this is amazing, isn't it? That is our reality. That is the reality of the Christian life. That resurrection is part of our future. The resurrection body. Jesus came back with a resurrected body. When he was resurrected, the Bible says that his body was made anew. And the resurrected body that God has for all of us in the future can do amazing things. When you read the account of Jesus rising up and coming to his disciples, sometimes he would just appear in a room. They're in a room, the disciples are scared, the door is locked. 
And suddenly here is Jesus. He walked through the walls. <laughs> How did he do that? In the spiritual world, there are things that we don't appreciate, but there, there are realities that we don't even see. That is our future. Have you lost someone who has gone on ahead of us to heaven? That's, they, they will be resurrected again. And one day when you finish this life, you're going to meet the Lord if you've lived your life for him. If the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, the spirit of God is in you, that spirit will give life to your mortal body, to your body. Amen? Amen. So Paul, you know, the, old, the apostles in the Bible, they were very, very big on resurrection. They really thought about it a lot. They saw, because they, they saw Jesus was physically dead, and here he is alive. And there was some reality to it that they, they really were interested in. So Paul says something like this in Philippians 3. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may retain, attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul wanted to experience the resurrection too. He's the one, same one who says that the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, if it's in you, will give life to your body. And Paul says, I want to experience that. When you read Paul's letters, he talks about being dead to sins. In fact, the Bible compares the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus to our baptism, and that once you're baptized, you become a Christian, you are given a new life in Christ, new life, completely new life. You are resurrected with him. Last slide on this one. Paul says, I don't consider that I've already made it my own. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not experienced everything yet. But I, I want to experience Christ. I want to experience his power. I want to experience the resurrection. I don't consider this yet, that I've done it yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. He says, I'm not looking at the, what's happened in the past. Did I have problems yesterday? Yes, I did. Should that stop me from believing God for life in my body? Life, I mean the eternal life of God? from meeting my needs, from taking care of me for the future? No. I press on. I press on. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. God has called us for a great future, which starts now. We have to press into it. We have to press on for it. Amen? Today we are going to celebrate communion. And when we celebrate communion, what we're actually doing is remembering the death and resurrection of Christ. Please turn to page 12 of your hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In silence, can you just talk to the Lord and say, Lord, whatever it is that is bothering you, anything that you feel is standing between you and God, ask for his forgiveness. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please turn to someone next to you and say, the peace of Christ be with you. Offer them peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. In your covenant love for us, you gave Jesus for us. He came, he died, he suffered, and here we are. As a result, Lord, you have established a new covenant with us in Christ. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirits. On the night on which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. Gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Spirit, your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of, and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquets. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with, his, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let's approach the, throne of, uh, approach the altar this morning. And as we take the elements and we say, the body of Christ given for you, the response is, Amen. We say, the blood of Christ shed for you, Amen. We'll have the, today we'll do this a bit differently. The choir will come first so they can return to their seats and lead us in singing.
blood of Jesus is powerful to wash you, to cleanse you, to redeem you from everything that holds you back. Jesus came, gave his life for you. He has redeemed you from the curse of the law, from sin, from habits that try to hold you down, from sickness. Whatever it is, the blood of Jesus is potent. The body of Christ was broken for you. Go from here with this assurance and walk in your victory in Christ's name. Amen. We do have the hymn numbers on the screen, so you can join the singing if you like. Lord who gave his life for you, he lives, he's alive, he's risen, and because he lives, you can face anything in your tomorrow. You can face anything that comes at you. Dare to trust in him, dare to commit your life to him, dare to hold on to him for everything, for your salvation, for your living, for your needs, because he's more than capable. Go from here with that confidence and assurance in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord is good to us. The Lord is merciful. His mercy endures forever. The Lord who gave Jesus for you withholds nothing from you. The Lord who gave his only son, his best for you, loves you with no limits. And Jesus gave his life for you, and he's your high priest. He stands at the right hand of God, and he prays for you, intercedes for you. Know that you are so loved, and that that love is never ending, and God will take care of you. Dare to trust him with your life, with everything. In Jesus' name, amen. choir is going to do the last two songs. Um, the last song would like all of you to stand up and join us in. We'll do one first. The title of this next song is Christ for the Whole Wide World. Jesus died not just for you and me, but for everyone else. And we have a task to reach out to people and show the love of Christ wherever God places us, whether it's in your workplace, in your family, family friends. Jesus is yearning to save them too. 
So let's go out there and show the love of Christ. Amen.
shine upon you. The Lord strengthen you with the spirit within. Give life to your mortal body. Give life to whatever you are engaged in that God has opened the door for you for. Give life to you in your career, in your life, in everything. Give life to your marriage, your family. This is what Jesus came to do, to give us life and give it to us abundantly. <coughs> Go from here in the confidence that the Lord gives us. Jesus is risen. He's risen for you and for me. And his resurrection power is in you and in me. Let us make the most of the resurrection power of Christ in our lives. And let us live victoriously in this life. And look forward to a great time in heaven with God. In Jesus' name, amen.